Hello, and welcome to The Post Workshop. If you're new to this channel, we produce instructional videos to help strengthen your film and video post-production skills. The process of bringing video, audio, graphics, and other media into any editing software is called ingest. In this multi-part video, I will be walking you through the ingest process with Avid Media Composer, the most professional editing application available today. We will start by orienting ourselves to the source browser, followed by the differences between linking and importing media, which will set the groundwork for a more advanced method of preparing media for editing. This video is designed for beginners, so if you are new to Avid, you have found a great place to start learning this incredible software. Okay, here we are in Avid Media Composer. I have opened a brand new project in the Source Record editing workspace. In this tutorial, we will be ingesting media via the Source Browser. So if you don't already have it open, right click in the bin where you would like to bring the material into, select Input, Source Browser. When ingesting material into Media Composer, you have two options that you can see here, link and import. Before we get into the differences between these options, let's first orient ourselves to the source browser window. In the center of the window, we have two panes that in this state look very similar to one another. On the left, we have the folder navigation pane. This pane allows you to drill down to any file location that your operating system has access to. If I would like to access files on this system's media drive, legacy interviews, interview selects, I navigate here and the contents of that location appear to the right in the content pane. If this is a frequent location for you, you might want to add it to your favorites by clicking the star above. Now when you select the favorites tab, you can quickly jump straight to any location on the list. To remove any location from this list, select it and click the star icon again. The folder tree icon collapses all directories in the folder navigation pane, taking you back to the top level of your file system. The home button takes you to the home directory of the OS user that is currently logged into the system. This up pointing arrow jumps up one level to the parent directory. The left pointing arrow takes you back to your previous location. The right pointing arrow reverses the action of the left, just like the back and forward buttons on a web browser. The last button in this section is the media volumes button, which I can demonstrate with this camera card directory. With media volumes enabled, this allows you to view folders as media volumes like this. If the button is disabled, it allows you to see all files and folders within media volumes. You can get to the same media, but depending on the camera card, this could require a lot of digging. On the subject of camera cards, I never ingest media directly from the original card. While you can, I strongly recommend copying the entire contents of the card to your media drive, physically detaching the camera card from your system and then ingesting directly from the media drive. This way, if anything goes wrong during the ingest or media is accidentally deleted or otherwise lost, you can always go back to the original camera card. The insurance and peace of mind this backup produces is certainly worth the extra step. Now let's go back to the media we were interested in working with. I'm going to expand the source browser window just a bit so we can make better use of it. In the content pane, we see a list of files organized in a spreadsheet-like style. This is called text view and is great for a technical review of the material. But if you would like a visual preview, switch from text view to frame view 
by clicking this button. Immediately, we have a much better understanding of what this footage is. You can enlarge these thumbnails with Ctrl L on a PC or Command L on a Mac. If that's too large, decrease their size with Ctrl K on a PC or Command K on a Mac. In fact, these keyboard shortcuts are universal throughout Media Composer. You will see them used here, in bins, and even to resize tracks in the timeline. L for larger, and K for k smaller. Or just remember that K is next to L on the keyboard. In frame view, we have several ways of previewing the material. By dragging the mouse across any of the clips, you can scrub forward and backward. This is called Hover Scrub. Select any clip and you can use the standard JKL playback keys. Play forward with L. I thought that was a little weird, but again, I'm the new guy. I wasn't going to say anything. What happened? Pause with K and play in reverse with J. Press L twice to play the clip at twice its normal speed. A little weird. But again, I'm the new guy. I wasn't going to say anything. What happened? three times for triple speed, and so on. The same for J, just in reverse. If you're not familiar with JKL playback, pause this video and play around with it. JKL was invented by Avid in the early days of nonlinear editing and has been adopted by every major editing application, so it is extremely useful to know. Once you have selected the clips that you want, we can move down to the bottom of the window and finally discuss the differences between link and import options. With link selected, a connection is created between a pointer file called a master clip and the original media on your drive. A master clip is essentially a tiny piece of metadata that is used to locate the media itself. A significant disadvantage of linking is that if the media is moved or folders are renamed, the link is broken and your media will go offline. Then you will have to relink to the new location or file name. This contrasts with importing media, where it is copied to a central storage location and transcoded to a codec that is optimized for editing. Linking is faster, but importing results in superior editing performance and enables advanced media management options. However, with the exception of media that cannot be linked, I advise against using the import option here in the source browser. There is a better way to optimize your media which we will get to shortly. Let's start with the fastest and simplest way to ingest media, linking. First, in the content pane, select the clips that you want to ingest. In this case, I'll take them all. Select or confirm your target bin. Only open bins will appear on this list. Click link, and you will see these clips appear in the bin. We won't be needing the source browser anymore, so I will close it. Load any clip into the source monitor by double-clicking it. Mark in and out points around the segment you want to use. I for in, O for out, and we are ready to splice this clip into a sequence. However, while you can take your project from start to finish with nothing but linked media, very few professional editors work this way. The primary reason is performance. All editing applications, including but not limited to Media Composer, run smoother and more efficiently when working with media that is optimized for editing. Avid's DNX family of codecs are engineered specifically for this purpose. In our next video, I will show you a method to transcode your camera media to Avid DNX media. This method transcodes faster than the source browser's import option, and as a bonus, creates a workflow that will improve your editing decisions. Sound good? Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you the very best with all of your post-production projects.